Self-Portrait. When I turn the ceiling light on, the sky turns purple, and the bathroom window is filled with a mountain of crooked limbs like a huge Van Gogh. When I turn it off, the details change. The trunks appear, the ducks walk up the grass, and the candles begin to shine in the dark canal. In either case, I am looking at two large gum trees, sweetly shaped by years of care, and now left alone to live or die slowly and peacefully. I will think about them all day, and dream about staying here like a secret body at the window while they change in the light from snarled twig to violent branch to limb with shadow and I will dream about standing out there on the towpath, staring back at myself in this large, empty house. Others will go to Paris, sit at the tables and do the river, and do the boulevard. I will stand at the window dressed like a prisoner in old corduroys and Brown's beach vest and jacket, fingering the stamped buttons and testing the pockets. I will look at my greenish eyes in the mirror and touch my graying hair and twist my hat. I will think of Van Gogh in Brussels raging against the bourgeois world. I will think of him working all day in the sun. I'll think of him in shock, and I will think of myself sitting in Raubsville, the only Jew on the river, counting my poems and, finally, counting my years. And I will think of Van Gogh when he headed south. I will think of him giving his life to the art of the future. I will think of his poverty. I will think of his depressions and exaltations. I will think of him with yellow straw hat and pipe. I will think of him with fur cap and bandaged ear. I will think of him against the whirling lines, small and powerful in the hands of the blue god. And I will think of myself walking down my road between the rows of dogs, so familiar now that only one still barks, the horrible Shone clawing her concrete and biting her twisted fence. And I will think of my weeds and watery places where I can go to rest between the scourges. And I will think of New York just two hours away, still rotting and gleaming in the golden dust. I will think of myself in my rabbi's suit, walking across the marshland to my car. I will think of myself in black beard and corn cob, dragging the hay or leaning against a locust. And I will think of the mad existence of all artists as they lean against trees and doors. And I will look with horror at the vile ones, the bugs eating up our leaves. And I will dream of another artistic life for the fiftieth time, of a small, decayed city half buried in sand, surrounded by trees and water, with artists living together, with old newspapers lying piled up under the porches, with that whole race of mothers and carpenters and gardeners living inside their houses and in their yards. For the sake of Van Gogh I will dream it, for the sake of his olive trees, for the sake of his empty chair, for the sake of his Bible, for the sake of his inflamed eyes, for the sake of his wild mind, and for the sake of his black Belgians retching and gasping for air, and for the sake of his Londoners stumbling over the greasy cobbles, and for the sake of his exhausted farmers stabbing at their potatoes, and for the sake of all the lunatics of God, for the sake of the flesh-eaters gathering after work at the authority, for the sake of the wagons and baby carriages lined up outside the armory, for the sake of the frozen Armenians going back to their empty towns, for the sake of the Jews of Vilna waiting inside their synagogues, and for the sake of the naked boys moving between the numbered tables, and for the sake of the slowly moving bodies under Lexington Avenue, and for the sake of the horses that labored quietly for three thousand years, and for the sake of the unassimilated wolves who lay trapped inside their own forests, 
and in memory of the first stones we dragged out of the mountain, and in the memory of the fire out of which the burned doves flew looking for water, and in the memory of the long life that stretches back now almost a million years, and in the memory of the cold rain that saved our lives, and in the memory of the leaves that helped us breathe, and in pleasant memory of the grass that clung to our slippery arms and legs, and in memory of the nourishing sand in which we lay like dead fishes, slowly mastering the sky. In honor of Albert Einstein, in honor of Eugene Debs, in honor of Emma Goldman. <laughs>